Hi everyone and welcome back. So we are going to build this simple demo application which is going to be using all these different stack. So all my incoming videos will be talking about all these things, all these tools and technologies which you can, can see on the screen. Next JS, Prisma, TypeScript, Tailwind. Tailwind icon is not there. And we are doing all these things inside a NPNPM workspace and the monorepo tools, Postgres, React, NextAuth, TRPC and Tailwind okay so we are creating just a combinations of these services like in this demo example which i'm going to build for simple authentication we are using prisma next.js typescript tailwind and uh, just simple postgres right because here we are not using next auth uh, based authentication we are not using trpc we are going to build the next.js api route okay so this uh, next JS pages will talk server side pages will talk to the next JS APIs and they will talk to Prisma for the database and Prisma will talk to the Postgres for fetching and data and storing the data. So it's like a, we are building a simple authentication APIs. Okay, so this is a simple stack we are building and then we will start adding in the next video. I will add a next auth like simple authentication with the next auth and then we will also build the APIs. Once you are authenticated, you should be able to submit like a, create a to-do app, create a post, blog post and all. For that, we are going to use this next auth and the TRPC. So these two additions we will be doing in the coming videos. But for now, in this video, we are talking about these four things with the Tailwind. So let's see, this is the exciting uh, videos which I'm covering. It's all about end-to-end -end, uh, simple, simple projects with all these tools and technologies. So before starting, what do we need? We need the uh, Next.js 13.x. So the version we are using is 13.x here. Okay, and this Prisma for the migrations. We can use a SQLite because we are doing demos, right? So you can you can decide, okay, what do you want to use? So this can be talking to SQLite, Postgres, MongoDB or anything. What do we need for integrating the the prisma with all these things we just need this instance running somewhere i mean sqlite i use for demos because you don't need a docker container docker compose file or create the container for the sqlite it's a sqlite this is like a file based database which will just create a file and this will store all your data inside that it's a rdbms like sql query based uh, database system and if you want you can just use the database a provider as a postgres in this prisma schema file then it will be just talking to your uh, postgres database so that depends the implementation is still going to be the same we are using sql and the typescript are always we are whenever we are writing the components always we are just worried about using typescript typescript everywhere either you write in next js react react js or any applications and everything is wrapped inside this monorepo tool so we are already using monorepo uh, extensively in all our projects in my previous projects all my demo applications and all i'm using this nx monorepo tool and then i'm just putting all these things together in the pieces right so all these things are combined in this monorepo tool then these three two different technologies we are going to add in the coming videos and make our videos more uh, learning with more learning and more exciting because all these things you might already aware here and there Okay, so let's get started. What we will do is we will first try to create the next JS application which includes the Tailwind support, TypeScript support and supporting 13.x. So we are not going to build those things from the scratch. We already have a 13.x setup with the Tailwind uh, having a support for the TypeScript. Either you use a create uh, next step that also gives you all these things. Like if I just go to next JS 13 and if i try to create 13.4 is the latest version but you can just use it to create uh, the latest application uh, with the i mean in the next js beta version it is supporting this app directory which you can use so this uh, all these dependencies you need to install and then so what i will do is i will pick the the simple next js 13 stable folder structure and we will build on top of that so here we can use this npx create react app latest okay and let's go to our code so this is our monorepo code which we are using in all our videos 
I will just open the integrated terminal for the app directory and I will just, just do create next app latest okay so I want to proceed with this what is your project name my project name is next.js prisma auth okay because here I'm not using next auth or trpc I'm going to use TypeScript yes, ESLint no, Tailwind CSS yes. Uh, would you like to use source directory with this project? Yes. App directory yes. Uh, would you like to customize the default import alias? Yes, because we can we can have an alias available so that if you are using things inside a lib, you can just use at the rate imports. Import audios, yeah, with this at the rate. And all these dependencies tailwind css post css auto prefixer the react react dom is always needed and types node next next auth sorry react react dom all these dependencies are installed so this is our simple setup tailwind config uh simple tailwind config ts config for the compiler package json has all these dependencies with us those directory with the default layout and default pages we can run this application next config and inside this you can see the app directory right so it is a 13.x supporting app directory inside app directory we can create all the the layouts so all the pages and all the apis which we are going to build for our simple authentication layouts like login register and the profile page okay so before moving forward i will try to install all the other dependencies which i will need in this application so i will just do inside where are we inside application and i will move to inside this prisma auth and i can just use pnpm add all the dependencies like i'm going to use bcrypt because i'm going to write authentications and bcrypt is i'm going to use to compare the password and generate the hash password okay and then i'm going to use uh like do we want to use store in our application so that depends are we going to use any kind of a state management library i'm going to use just end so there are different solutions like we can use uh, redux and all i just wanted to have a lightweight library to manage the state for my client side components just end and jot for the data validations which i'm going to send to the apis and the react uh, hook forms react hook form this is what i'm going to use to uh use because we are going to build a login form and register form so that can, the, this library can help us to build the forms and with all the validations okay so these are pretty much all the libraries which we need and prisma client how can we forget that so prisma client because we are going to use prisma and we are going to initialize a prisma directory inside our project so i will create a prisma directory in the root of our folder Prisma and then I will be creating Prisma config, schema.config. So here schema.config dot schema dot prisma. I always make the mistake in the naming. Schema dot prisma. Okay. And then inside a schema dot prisma, it's all about like uh, what is your provider what is your models all those things you are going to specify so i'm going to specify generator client okay generator client is the provider is prisma client js you will see most of these prisma schema files are kind of a similar data source db what is your provider here so provider here i'm just going to use sqlite 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 and then the url okay what should be the url that we are going to fetch from our env file and its database url either it is a postgres or whatever we are going to fetch this value from env so it's a database url am i doing any mistake sqlite env database url so it's a invalidating data source okay db cannot be defined because source with the name already exists i'm not sure what is this error data source nothing is defined like this and then i will just define model 
so i'm just defining user as a model so how we define the models in the prisma schema files like okay id id is id uh, auto increment id is unique default is uuid okay i'm going to use uuid instead of auto incremented key and at the rate id its default is uuid and it should be unique i think unique is always because we are using uuid so you don't need to worry about uniqueness name is of type string so you can add all the properties which you want to have in the schema file email password that is also of type string and all the other attributes role is also of type string and here we can use this default default means the role is default user okay and then there is a let's say verified verified is of type boolean so how we specify it boolean like this and the default is are you verified until unless you don't verify you will be false then we can say created at i will just quickly finish it created at that is of type date time so these are the different type which prisma schema use and this is the default default is now it's a function here are we adding this is two default will use this okay so then there is a updated at that is also of same time date time there is also something like updated at okay so default is now so this is like a simple model we have created or seeing the default uuid what is the problem with this default uuid okay let's put the other it id sometimes okay it's fixed we don't need to use a unique for this uuid okay so this is pretty much our prisma schema file right now what is the next thing we can just try to use this prisma migrate generate command to generate the client okay so let's do that so here we need to have a dot env file at the root and then we where we will specify our database url okay and then i can just use npx prisma generate Uh, that should be in the root of the file see there is no command like this this is npx <coughs> so i mean client is already generated okay yes it is just installing this package and then schema.prisma uh, default the attribute is uuid so this should be string okay we got one error and what is that because this is uuid so in that case we can have this as a string okay i will do this again generate command it is loading the variables from the dot env and then it should be able to run i mean it will generate the client and we can also do the migrate in the same way so it has generated the client and it has also populated these model inside node modules and then here i can say migrate it should ask me okay migrate prisma migrate status always this is migrate day or dev okay my file name is user that is my schema file and here i did the prisma migrate so what i got i got the migration file that contains the sql right this is the not null primary key name basic attributes right so this is my migration so that means in the sqlite i already have a user table created okay this is user db this is the file based database right and this is my schema file so now i can go and try to start accessing the prisma client to access this user model user.find update delete and all these different different operations so what we can do we can start writing our components layouts pages and the apis in the next js
So now let's work on our uh, folder structure. We already have a Prisma schema file in the source. We have app directory. So what is going to be there inside app directory? So inside source we can have components. So app components and we can also have the lib folder and we can use alias to import these things, import things from a lib and component. And we also wanted to just uh, do some play around with this small tiny tiny state management library just end. So this is a store lib component and inside source we are also going to have a middleware that I will let you I will talk about what is the use of this. So here the all the authentications and state management we is being managed by us. We are writing our custom code of uh, auth APIs inside app there is a api folder that is going to manage all these things so inside app we are going to put okay here already we have a global layout and the global page i mean on the forward slash so we are going to create api and inside api we can create all the different apis like auth api i want to create so api auth Inside API, the route will be API auth. And then inside this, I'm going to have a login, logout, and the register. Login. There will be a logout. And next is register. Okay, simple. These are the simple next JS APIs because next JS is server side and it runs on the server. So we can also build a server side APIs here. All these APIs and inside this, we can also build the pages so inside app because this is app directory we can create a login all the login pages will go here rc app pages so here we have a login register and the profile i hope you already aware about this how this this is how we are going to create pages and in each and every page will have these components like page.tsx i will just create a skeleton for now page dot tsx same for the profile same for the register and uh, each and every will also have this loading dot tsx you can also create loading dot tsx same you can copy to the profile and for register and then you can also create error dot tsx that you can copy to profile because next yes does does these error handlings and you can have a loading state there is a separate component you can create for each and every route okay and at the the root layout you have a layout dot tsx okay let's collapse all of these api login profile register and then we have a layout root layout you can say and the page dot tsx this is the root page component okay we don't have much here so i will just try to get rid of all those things inside so inside main we can just define okay what we wanted to display on the home screen okay and then if there are some components because we will also build some components like header footer all those components we can create inside this let's say we are going to have a simple header component header.tsx and i'm going to have a custom loading component loading button component and all the other components which you see we you wanted to use like let's say spinner whenever you click on some buttons i wanted to add a spinner there and then form input component so these are all our reusable components i'm creating form input.tsx okay these four components inside lib uh, do we need anything because we need to initialize prisma and all those things so we need uh, lots of helper methods inside this so one i remember is we need to have a prisma because we need a prisma connection we need a x we need access to the prisma client right so you can just use the same syntax which we are using from everywhere like i wrote this earlier also from at the rate prisma client and uh, we are getting prisma client through this and objective of this to export the prisma client 
so this is like a global for prisma object so it will be available in the global object global as unknown as prisma and type is prisma client okay so here we can just to export const prisma which is global for, for prisma equal dot prisma right either you already have the prisma client otherwise you can just create a new prisma client and you can pass any custom options you wanted to have like to log all the queries this should be a way of doing it prisma client inside this you can just pass log and you can specify okay i wanted to log all the queries which are being executed through the prisma and here you can just return if process dot env dot node env is not equal to production and what you can do if it is not production then you can assign global prisma dot prisma equal to prisma right it is all about the enabling the caching for the development mode if it is not there not production then you can have the, this global prisma object and you can just use it okay similarly all the other things like managing the sessions all these things will go inside a lib now let's get started with building the apis so in api we have auth login logout and register so what we what these all these things will do we will just create a route inside all these files route.ts logout route.ts file register also will have a route.ts okay and then these are all the route handlers route handlers which is going to use this bcrypt library prisma client to access the 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 table and do the insert update delete all these different operations okay and here we are going to write all the the login and the register mechanism okay so we are go we are going to write a login but before that i wanted to talk about these two libraries jord and just end is we are using for state management it's a very tiny library and that's what i like because i don't want uh, a big library for this i need something tiny which can just manage my state so this is like initial state and these are the getter setters methods you can define so this is like uh, here increase population will increase the bear population by one remove bears will set the bear with zero so it's like this is how you can create the store like use bear store and then this you you can use this in your component use bear store right it's like a simple tiny library so we will see how we use it and jord is used for the schema validations i will try to pick some example if i can get okay gold silver ecosystem basic uses yeah this is the basic uses so here let's say i created a this my schema is only talking about okay i need a, some string and then you can just do the dot parse that will give you the payload if uh you are pa if you're not passing a string my schema dot parse and you are passing the number obviously it's it's not a string so it will throws a jord error and that gives us a validation okay the type which is specified this can be object this, this can be array of object this can be anything this is a schema and for schema for inside a schema for each and every property you will specify the type jet dot string jet dot integer jet dot number jet dot object it can be a complex one like this user which contains a username and maybe a password name and all here i'm just specifying jet dot string so either it, you can mark them as optional otherwise you have to pass it so here i'm passing it and it will just validate and it will allow me to do so all these are the primitive values string number begin boolean date and then uh, you can also make them required or optional okay so let's uh, use this so what why, why we need this we are writing a login route okay so in the login route what we are expecting we will be getting the post request so how we create a simple route export const function post 
I talked about all those things in the, the next GS tutorials, like how to create a simple route, export. Okay, it's a function we want is async function post and it will be give us a request. So it's a next request. And here we can wrap everything inside a try catch. We are going to do a lots of things inside this. Okay, inside try catch, what we need is we need to access first body. Okay, and how we can get the body in the next JS API handler. So we can do request dot JSON. So as so we need to create some type also for this. Like what will be the, the type we are getting? Like login, user input, and all. So for that, we can just create a login user input so this is the type we are going to create and then what we will do is we will just parse it to get the data back so login user schema let's do the validation first so in validations what we are going to do we are going to define the types so inside lib i will create a validation so the same strategy you can follow to validate the the data okay so here inside validation, I will create an index user schema.ts. And here I can just do import. Z, oh, I think it will be a small Z from that is Jod, okay. And then this is small Z. And here I can do the validations. So here I can just create export const. Uh, first we need to have a login schema, login user schema. And here I'm going to use this jar.object and I'm going to define okay what uh, how it looks like. And then I can infer the type also. I can export the type also from this export type login user input equal to jar dot infer and because this type we are getting from so type of type of login user schema so we are going to get the type from that the type is nothing but okay what uh, you are passing inside this payload so here let's say email and how we define the validation for this jar dot string okay i think it should be jet string first of all and inside string we can just say required error if you are not specifying this email required i hope you have already used these libraries like joy can also be used with this and here you can say dot min all the other validations you can put on top of that min that means okay email is required dot email if there is an error email is invalid and then next argument is password so password also we can have validation so it is jet dot string and inside string you can just set the validation required error password is required okay and this is what is the validations and all we can add on top of that min password is required and you can also specify the validations like okay what is the total criteria okay password must be at least eight character okay, simple job validations we are doing okay this is missing here password is required this is required error okay so this is like a simple schema and we have created a type now how to import these types in this login uh, I can try to import it here. Okay, this is like alias import. We are able to do login user input, and then here I can also use a login user schema. 
dot parse so what we are doing is we are doing the parse and i don't need okay we, we don't need to put a weight here we can just do a simple parse body so if the validation passed that means our data is correct if there is an error if there is a validation error then obviously we need to just throw error so if error is instance of jod error we can just throw this otherwise return get error response okay we, we need to build this method but these are like some custom methods we need to define inside a helpers otherwise we can just throw a simple messages get error response so inside our lib we have validations and prisma i can create a helpers.ts so we can have a error messages sending properly okay we can, i can define one generic generic function export function get error message get error response should be proper and what we need to do here it will just accept a couple of arguments like status message or errors and based on that we will define okay what is the error we need to return it can be jord error also so i will just import it from the jord and then but because what actually we, we we will be returning returning next response so i already have a snippet available for this next response will be coming from next server and then this method we can call from our login so get error response jord error is if error this is instance of jord error then do this otherwise get error response and we will just send 500 internal server error occurred right something is wrong which we don't know internal server error okay what is wrong with this error object is not assignable so here there are two type of errors can be thrown we i mean this is optional next error get error response so th these are the validations so now what we have now we got the payload and now we can start doing the prisma stuff here const user equal to await so i am going to access prisma prisma i'm going to get from the lib prisma okay dot user why this is not showing me so i got the prisma from the lib prisma and then it should show me all the models which i have created if it is not showing then we need to just execute this generate command npx prisma generate because we need to have this model available on the prisma object so ta -ta. this is strange uh ideally it should have this user object on that let me just see what is there here so if i look into this prisma client right because this is the node modules when you do npm npx prisma generate it should be generating this prisma client with the user model so this is my index.d.ts i can see the user type and this user type should be available everywhere you can see this is the model name user and okay let's see this prisma.user prisma i'm getting from this login so let's see we need to just try again prisma.user so what all operations we need to perform here first we will check okay if dot find unique it's better if we can get the types okay that actually solves our lots of problem so i will try to get the types first await prisma dot So if you want to know what is the problem here if you see this prisma is coming of type n 
I think it should be coming of type prisma point. And here also it is any. That is the problem for us, right? Here is prisma of type any. Why that is if my node ENV is not production and prisma is of type any is being assigned with any. Okay, this new prisma client is also of type any. It's strange. Okay, this is prisma client. Oh, I can just say this that is prisma client. Will it change anything? No. It's all TypeScript stuff. Uh, sometimes it happens is if I reload this whole app, then it should work. Okay. And here you can see I literally did nothing. I just closed the VS code and I opened it. Now it is showing the correct type. Even if I go to prisma.ts, this prisma is showing correct type of prisma client, right? This is what I want. And now because I need typings, I cannot run things without typing prisma dot use user dot here I will do find unique right prisma dot user dot find unique based on what based on email so inside aware because without these typings we can't take the help of TypeScript to do our stuff so here data dot email what is there a string is not assignable to type a user unique input email does not exist in type okay so this is the where close find unique prisma.user.find unique where email equal to data dot email now you need to check uh, what is there inside a user object it's all typescript stuff which we are facing I mean, email is not assignable. That is strange. To type their user input. So if we try to decode this problem, then this email, if you see, this email is we are, we are trying to do the unique, but there is no unique constraint added on this email. So we need to add this, otherwise how it will work. And now I will just do npx prisma generate. It will update my client with this updated model. Okay, I'm not inside a correct directory. So these uh, errors and these things may happen. It's all about how you can troubleshoot while doing it on the live. Okay, it has generated a client. Now I will go to the routes and I will try to do this listing again. Email equal to data dot email and obviously the types won't be reflecting as soon as I have done it but if you see this user model now if I try to just check this user entity here inside this node modules you can see the path prisma client index dot d dot ts prisma client and if I try to see my user model this is the email I mean you will find it somewhere how this user model is defined and then find unique options okay let's not uh, struggle with this I will just restart my VS code that should fix this TypeScript error and as you can see this TypeScript error is gone I mean it's really strange and obviously because what why we are where these types are defined these types are defined inside a Prisma client and when you update them using prisma generate command new types gets added and sometimes this typescript because typescript loaded on the runtime when you open the vs code that should be a really bug that vs code needs to solve on the fly they need to refresh the the types defined in the uh, node modules okay let's let's make progress we are already delaying this so here we got the user object if we got the user object then what we need to do is we should start comparing the if let's say we don't get the user object right if user object is null so here we are checking if user object is not null then we can just do await compare so this method we are going to import from bcrypt.js compare data dot password password with user dot password 
okay and if this is true then what we can do is return get error response and error response is 401 that means credentials are invalid invalid data if this is not like this then we can just create a JWT token JWT token expire in that we are going to get from environment variables so inside helpers we are going to create this environment variable helper method so get environment variable it should be there so how we get the environment variables uh, in next.js right so inside the lib helpers we can create this method get environment variable so go to helpers export const get env i'm trying to create it as a production ready because we don't want just a half cooked uh, production application okay this is of type string let's say and then what it is going to do it is going to return a string get environment variable what happened with this okay so what we are going to do we are going to get the value for this process dot env dot key whatever the key you are passing if value if value which we have received and value dot length equal equal to zero that means we don't have it right so in that case we can just throw the error because we cannot start the application where environment variable is missing missing environment variable key not set something like that and if all these things are not there then return value so what is the error with this thing get environment variable comma expected export function get environment variable okay we can use this method everywhere in the application so here get environment variable what i want to get is the expiry token expiry so i will just pass the key which is jwt expire in that is my string and this i can import from the helper so don't create a mess by writing lots of code here here we can just keep the minimal implementation and here i'm going to create a token so all those uh, i'm going to use this helper only to create this token for me sign jwt because we are going to create the token for what information here this is the payload i'm going to pass the payload is user.id and the expiry i can pass this is another option which is inside a uh, number of minutes let's say it can be number of seconds also so i will just add minutes and this is jwt expire in that's it this method i'm going to define and then uh, let's define this method jwt sign jwt so what sign sign jwt do is this is going to return as the token inside helpers uh, inside lib we can create a token.ts that will do all these token related stuff okay token.ts here export const sign jwt and i'm just going to play around with this uh, library to create a token there are many different ways in which you can create a token so here it is expecting two different options two different argument payload which contains subscriber as a string and this is the first argument and options which contains the expiry that is also of type string right these two argument we are passing so we are just passing all the typescript typings and then here i will get the secret first jwt expiry and jwt secret key these two things we are going to use and here we are going to use get environment variable i defined this method in the helper get environment variable inside the token and here i'm just going to get the secret key jwt secret key 
so we need expiry and the secret key i will import this thing and once i get the secret i can just use the either i can just use zwt.sign there are many different ways of doing it or there are other methods also jaws is another library which is used to create a secure these tokens jaws is javascript okay this is not maybe <clears throat> If I remember this correctly, was sign JWT. Okay, this may be that. Okay, so we can just stick to JSON Web Token. I will try to add that module or a dependency. We don't need to make it complex by just introducing a separate library pnpm okay we need to go to that folder pnpm app pnpm add json web token okay and now i will just import it and i will just do a return jwt dot sign import how to do this so we can just take the help of uh, this library npm module json web token and how you can create a sign tokens jwd dot sign this is your payload then this is your secret right you will just import the json web token so here i will try to add a jwt and i think i need to add the the types also for this so how to do this with the pnpm pnpm add minus d type json web token and then I can just do JWT dot sign and what is the payload I already have a payload and the secret key which I'm going to use to sign it I think this is a sync method or it is returning a promise sign okay so this is simple and then there is a verify method we can uh, write verify means this is creating a signed JWT token then there is another method is to verify JWT that also we can define i'm going here a little slow because all the code i have to write verify this would take a token as a string this is taking token as a string and then it is going to return the promise let's say promise of any for now and here what we need to do is uh, we can just put this inside a try catch So here, uh, const secret is fine, const verify equal to JWT dot verify and here I need to pass the token and the secret. So if verification is successful, then otherwise it will just throw a uh, okay your token is invalid same we can see in the, the documentation also how we are doing a sign and the verify method this is like jw.verify token in the same secret right uh, like the, the wrong secret this is also callback based so it will return a promise okay jw.verify it should return okay yeah so we can use this verify jwt now what we need to do we just need to do the login get the token and then just do the simple access create a protected apis and checking the session through the next js middleware so still a long way to go okay so now we can call sign jwt method this we will import so here we will get the token and now what we need to do we need to send this token inside the cookies so we will get the expiry so token max age here we are not setting the token uh, the age of the token but the age of the cookies which is we can just do a parsint 
and here we got the wt expire in this is in the minutes so we'll just multiply it with the 60 so that is seconds and const cookies options so here we can just set the cookies okay what will be the cookie name what will be the value so the value is this token which we have received http only true http only there should be a type for it also for these cookies options so http option true path is forward slash and domain is whatever the domain you have so if you want to secure it secure the cookies like okay if your environment is process dot env dot not env if that is not equal equal to development then secure it and the last option is max age that is token max age okay and now we have the cookies object so we can just send the, send the response back const response equal to new next response next request next response and inside this uh, what i can do is i can just specify the data so the data how can i specify i can just do a json.stringify and this is an object status okay message I mean it's like I just want to send a stringified response back so this is your response you have created and then you need to send the response with the cookies okay so you, you got the response object so either you do this or we can just do all these things together await promise dot all I mean I also got the syntax for I'm writing this syntax for the first time doing all these things together here you can set the response dot cookies dot set or set all the cookies options and then once you do it response dot when you wanted to set multiple cookies response dot cookies dot set that you logged in and all name logged in is my cookies value is true i mean this is just for the local session to know that you are logged in max is is token max is and return the response once it is done return response object so this response object we are sending with the cookies set okay this is our end-to-end -end simple login right if all these things that didn't work out then it's a jod error or some error internal server error which we can throw so it's a end to end the login flow for the next year's auth api okay so what we can do is we can test this uh, end to end this is our login route and when i do npm run dev right, i can just do npm run dev and i can start my application the only thing i changed here is you cannot have a middleware dot uh, ES file empty so I removed it for now and my server started on 3001 okay and I can just try to test this the login API and I just did a console.log data uh, okay so what I can do is here I can try simple login uh, currently this, this data is not in the database I can just check some validation error is coming that is expected right so my login API is working and here you can see this uh, Prisma is also triggering queries to the database. That is good news. So at least our login is working. Now we will just create a sign up where we can send a create a real user and then we can just do the login with that. The only error which I got is here it's a bcrypt.js. In my node modules it was bcrypt library so you need to change it to the bcrypt.js and it will work without any issue. Now we will just do the sign up. So what is the, the another API we need to build is inside a login, we have a register. 
right so we this is all login uh, now login is done we go to the register route.ts i will try to copy things from this and i will change this in the register handler so in the register the things are going to be pretty much similar here this is post handler and here i'm going to get instead of login user input we are going to create a register schema and register input so here i will just do is register user schema All right inside register user schema and i will just get the, the register user input from that so now it would be a little bit faster than what we have done for the login because we know what needs to be done here we have a name email couple of attributes we need to pass okay so i will just specify the whole payload what we need is let's say the name which is required jet dot string name is required name is required and then there is an email so here i will just put the email for the email the email should be required and it should be the email jet dot string email required and then minimum email required and then email validations here and then there is a password so for password we need to have a couple of uh, validations jet dot string password is required minimum i think we can just have the same validations whatever we have for the login so i'm just taking name email and the password as an input okay that should be enough for me name uh, email and the password okay and i can export the schema register user input i will go to the register api routes so it's a register user input i will import these things and this is register user schema i can import this also and we will just remove the unused imports so here what we are doing is first we got the data now once we got the data what is the next thing we are going to do we are going to hash the password const hash password and we are going to use the bcrypt library for it await hash that is coming from bcrypt.js we can use that and that is going to deal with the data.password and the salt value ab12 so this is the hash password and here we are not going to do all these things because it's very simple right we are just creating a user so we just need to do const user create a user for me and i'm going to use await prisma await prisma dot what is the the method name await prisma dot create prisma dot user dot create and inside this you specify the whole data whatever you are going to insert so that the data is we have the name data dot name email data dot email and the password which is hash password i think this information is more than enough and then what we are doing is once the user is created we are going to return the data so here i can do is i can just send the, the user object okay what happened here this is already a uh, object here i can just specify the data so i'm going to send the whole user object and i will just set set the password and define for this that's it right so this is the response we are sending back next response which will be of two type 200 and here you can specify this is the payload and then another argument you can specify is 
uh, wait let me just see because it accepts two argument new re ne next response this is the whole payload we are specifying inside this here okay i should be able to specify status status is 201 resource created and then what is the problem here i need to see the whole thing is it proper or not so new next response okay there is a this is the bracket and then there is another bracket the bracket okay so before closing this okay this is the second argument so here i can specify status which is 201 that's it and then written response so it's like a simple register api and if there is a jot error if the error is instance of jot error then we will just do the field validations and there are then there are other error codes you can get which is all about okay if this email already exists then you will get a specific error codes error is of type any for now if there is error code like this email already exists because that is unique get error, error, error response and here we can get error dot message okay a simple registry api so we can try this name email and the password and we got it so what i'm doing is just a name email password this is auth register and if i do this i will get an error so this is hello at the read gmail dot com let's say say hello name is say hello and password is say hello one thing which which we are missing so if i am able to create a multiple user with the same email because we only did prisma generate but we didn't do the prisma migrate because we updated a model uh, if you remember we made this unique but to apply this in the database level what we need to do we need to do a migrate also so cd at and here i need to do npx prisma migrate dev so it's like it should be a new migration migration will be created that will add a unique constraint to this file so this is again a user I'm so it may delete some data because we already have multiple before the error is recovered. Because what is happening is P3018 because there is already a data exists in the database that uh, contains the duplicate record. So if you apply the unique constraint, that means it's going to fail the migration. So in that case, is what we can do is either you can go to the SQLite and dump the data i mean just delete the data and how we can do that i will try to use this my client so here you can see the some of the emails are already duplicated so what i will do i will just dump all these records which are not being used and i will do this migration again all the data will be lost and the migration is applied now if you try to see the structure of this uh, email is there is a unique key constraint added here right now if you try to just do this there should be error okay this is expected right now i can just uh, use this email password for the login and i can be okay there is some internal error let's see what is that this error is about okay, where is it running okay let's see what is this error about email password well successfully okay so we need to debug this why why this is failing internal server error and how we can debug this so it's all about troubleshooting so this mistakes i have done myself and let's try to debug this so how would you debug so we are able to create user successfully and it is passing this validation we need to check if this expiry is coming and it is doing the sign jwt first of all if we check this postgres data is the data saved correctly 
okay we have the password that is correct user role verified name email password okay now here we will start uh, either do you can just do the log instructions so this is the name email and the password being passed okay so here we able to pass this particular line we got the jwt expiry sign jwt did we get the token here we can just try to do if we are getting the token or not and then it's all about sending the response back after getting the token so that means this method is not uh, giving us the token back user.id here jwt okay this is the problem we got it right this should be jwt secret key same thing is here jwt secret key and we will check if uh, jwt expire in jwt expire in and jwt secret key okay for this we can restart the application and check again okay this is our login obviously we created a i will try to create a user again okay hello We'll try to debug this thing and see where it is breaking. So it is created. Now we will try to simply do the login. And it will break and then we will see internal server error. So it's a Prisma query. Okay, here it is successfully. So it is not giving us the token back, right? So what can be the, the possible error? Here we'll go to the login get and moment variable so we'll go to the sign jwt it's we, we got the secret and jwt dot sign this is the method which return as the signed token okay and we can also use this expiry we can pass the expiry in jwt dot sign and create a signed token okay just to check uh, what is the error coming what i did is i just tried to put the console.log error it was not reporting this correctly uh, i can just do error dot message error is of type any and then if i try this thing i think i should get uh, nobody return for the response so here you can see what is the error the error exactly is jwt expire in so it, it was always most of the time with me is the typo if I just go to the dot env, it expires in. Now I will just try to double check it expire in secret key. So it's expired, so I will just change it to expire in and then I will just start this application again. Okay, and let's see this. And here I can see the response back. So I can just do the login, token success. And here you can see the cookies also. So there are two cookies I'm setting. This is a simple cookies. One is a token and one is a logged in, right? Token contains the token which we generated. And this is HTTP only secure false and logged in true. This is what we are getting. So this is our simple login and the registry flow is complete. This is end to end is happening, right? Simply we created these auth APIs in the next JS and now we have tested both the APIs using simple postman also both are working that means now our uh, client only components can access these apis and can send a next js api endpoint request so now that we can write we can just remove these console log uh, errors so this is how i just did a simple debugging this error in the secret key in the dot env is like a typo so you need to be aware and how we are doing a debugging just throwing a just checking what is the error in the try catch that error will probably will tell you what is the error which you have done like either some variable is missing or some uh, error is being thrown by doing a sign and verify so this is all we can have in the part one what i will do is i will create the part two of this video in the part two we will create all these client components let's say the login inside this we have a piece dot tsx and then we have a login form register form and in the profile if the session exists we should be able to fetch the user profile which contains okay the email and this is the username all this information so client only integrations we are going to do in the next video
uh thanks everyone thanks for watching and if you like the content you can subscribe